Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about GameStop. So, I'm not taking sides here, this isn't going to be a super controversial video, at least I hope not. I just want to point out a few things on the basics of how this actually is going down, or how it's working. Um, again, I'm not following every single story, I'm not reading every little tidbit, trying to you know get all the little details on it. But let me just ex talk about here, explain here a little bit. Uh, the short selling, I'm seeing people that are not in finance like, oh, short selling is ruining the world, it's terrible, down with these hedge funds, up with the, the modern man. Um, okay, you're all crazy just to put that out there. Uh, <laughs> let me just lay this out here, okay? When firms are traded on the stock exchange, you have people that buy and people that sell, right? When people want to buy, or there's more people buying than selling, that drives prices upwards, okay? Now, when people sell, and there's a lot more people selling than buying, that drives prices downwards, okay? This is crucial for any efficient market, right? If a firm, I don't know, it looks like it's doing well, it looks like it has good earnings, and nothing's came out yet, or even if earnings comes out, and I don't know, they beat it and they have great, amazing sales, right? People want to buy this stock. People want to invest in this company. The reason being is it looks like it's actually worth more than it's being valued at. So that's why you buy stocks, right? You buy the stock hoping it goes up, but the only way the stock goes up is if it's based on actual value in the corporation. Okay, that's how it works. Now, the opposite can be true as well. So, you can have a company, it looks like it's not doing well. So, GameStop is a good example of this, right? I buy stuff from GameStop. I don't have it sitting here. I have a Nintendo Switch, for example. So, I, I buy stuff from GameStop, right? I'm not against GameStop, but they sell products and companies that don't look like they're doing well so with COVID and you know a lot of them are in malls, for example, it doesn't look like they're gonna stay very much longer, like they could go bankrupt. There's going to be a prediction that it's not going to do very well, okay? If there is plans to file bankruptcy and if earnings are low, for example, and like, I don't know, even if analysts target it, it's supposed to you know return this much in sales and they return even less than that, like they're not doing well. Now I'm not gonna speak specifically for GameStop. Again, I don't follow them, I don't research them. But if the company's not doing well, any company in general, People that hold it are going to want to sell it. Why? Because you know the price is going to go down and the company or the asset you hold is actually worth less than it's trading at. So you can get more money for it today than it's going to be worth tomorrow. Okay. This is capitalism. This is how free markets work. People freely exchange and buy and sell things to essentially get what's best for them. Okay. That's completely fine. Now, when you have these scenarios, right, you have the option to sell. People are upset now about short selling because they don't understand this a lot of times. It should be illegal, it's crazy. No, short selling is when you see a stock, and again, it's not valued correctly, and you know it's gonna go down, or you think it's going to go down, no one really knows, you think it's gonna go down because of a variety of reasons here, then people can short sell, which means you don't hold the stock, but you actually borrow it from somebody else, right? It doesn't show on that person's account that you borrowed it, you're guaranteed to cover it. There's a variety of metrics and plays and rules that prevent you from essentially losing that. We'll talk about that in a second here. And when you go to short sell, you basically borrow it and you sell it today, and then you buy it back later in the future, and that share goes back to their person. This isn't complicated, right? It should not be complicated. Now, the way that they prevent people from essentially having massive debts that they owe people, so say I borrow a stock and then it becomes vastly I don't know, too expensive. So GameStop is an example of this, right? You short sell a stock, let's say you short sell it 30 bucks, and now it's worth $309. Again, that's 10 times the position, depending how big the position is. So if you did one share, right, almost anyone can cover that, you know, a couple hundred bucks, shouldn't be that big of a deal. But when firms or investors or individuals take vast positions in these, what ends up happening is as the price moves, there's essentially going to be a call for that. So they're gonna call and say, hey, you know, Dimitri, say I, let's say I did it. They say, Dimitri, you need to provide more capital down because it's going the wrong direction. And so we want to essentially make sure we have extra capital to cover that position if you default, okay? Makes complete sense, right? If the stock goes from 30 to let's say 60 and I, like, the, the dealer, the broker is getting uncomfortable, there's typically thresholds already set, like they're predefined. This isn't like, I feel like I should call you. <laughs> there's actual rules for this. Um, when it hits the threshold, then they'll call and say, okay, you can either close the position and take the loss. So in this case, you go from 30 to 60, your loss is 30 bucks, so you lose everything basically on it. Uh, but if it goes above that and say it goes to you know, 90, 100, 200, $300, you're gonna owe a lot more money than the position's worth. So this is where people are talking about the hedge funds being short squeezed. 
So if you don't know, a bunch of hedge funds bet against GameStop. It's pretty logical, to be quite honest with you. I don't know, GameStop's not in the best position, doesn't look like to be in the best position. Again, a lot of its business comes from malls and strip malls. Again, I still purchase stuff from there. So I would like to see them from a personal perspective stay in business. But if they're not making money and they're losing money, they're eventually going to run completely out of capital and they're going to have to file bankruptcy. So even if the stock value of GameStop is through the roof at three hundred, four, five, six, a million dollars per share, it doesn't mean it's worth a million dollars per share. Okay, it just means people are willing to pay that for that stock. Now, bank now GameStop can actually file bankruptcy. They can liquidate and close, and all those people holding all those shares, guess what they get? Nothing. You get nothing out of it, okay? If it goes bankrupt and it liquidates and there's actually no assets to be sold, which there probably would be, but there's no assets to be sold and they can't cover all the debt that they currently have. And then after all the debt's paid off and all, I mean, there's a legal list of who gets covered first, second, third. For example, IRS gets paid first, employees get paid before that. I think then it's IRS. Uh, then it goes into, I believe, debtors and then it goes down into tranches if you have derivative products and all that. I'm not an expert, so don't take my advice on that, but that's how it gets paid out in general here. And then finally, whatever's left over, you get paid. So if GameStop is really worth, say, $2 a share, and you're trading it at 300 and it goes bankrupt, guess what? You lose everything, okay? So that's how that kind of works here. Now, the controversy, which I don't know why this is a controversy, but again, it's because there is illegal activity occurring here. I know people are getting upset with me about this. So hedge funds are saying, hey, this looks like a bad, you know, bad decision here, a bad stock to buy they're going to short sell it. They're kind of indicating to the market, hey, we don't think it's gonna be good. So it puts pressure on because now there's more sells than buys. When it does that, it drives the price downward, okay? Now, a bunch of people from Reddit and their little group and club on there that are anti-Wall Streeters or whatever, um, they're going out and they're saying, let's all buy it and we're gonna fudge the price and we're gonna force the price forward. We're gonna manipulate the price so high that we're gonna force the short sell here or the short squeeze. We're gonna squeeze out this hedge fund and we're gonna make them you know, lose a bunch of money, right? Down with Wall Street, down with the hedge funds. Okay, well, first of all, this is illegal. Plain and simple, right? You can buy things. There's nothing against it. They could all go out and buy it. But if you're organizing a group, and I haven't looked at the threads or anything, but if you organize a group with an intention to increase or decrease prices, that's called market manipulation. So people are saying, oh, but the hedge funds, they're bad. They deserve to lose. You shouldn't short sell GameStop. We want it to stay around. If GameStop is not financially feasible, right, it needs to go bankrupt. Now, I don't know if it is or not, but that's a market efficiency piece. If people are just willingly buying GameStop thinking it's worth a lot, that's their decision too. Now, again, if they do file bankruptcy and everyone thinks it's great and wonderful, you're still gonna lose money on that. So that's something else to think. Now that the price is so high, even if you close out the hedge fund and they take massive losses, that's not gonna cover, from what I, what I know, I don't know everything, that's most likely not gonna cover all the positions. So a lot of you are stuck and they're gonna take losses as it comes back down. Now, if GameStop announced bankruptcy tomorrow, then the hedge fund would probably, if they could hold on long enough, then they wouldn't get squeezed, they wouldn't have to close the position and all those people that bought it would lose it. But let's go into why this is wrong. Why can't you manipulate markets, okay? So the middleman, the average Daily Joe, or whatever these people on Reddit are calling themselves with their dumb Robin Hood accounts, um, you're not a professional trader, just admit it. Uh, what's happening though is that you're taking a position trying to force the market to move one way or another so you can benefit off of it, right? And you think that's right because you agree with the Reddit people, you agree with the average man, okay? The reason this is a rule and why you can't do this is imagine who could actually move the markets and actually purposely screw you. This is why it's illegal to have, for example, predatory models. Predatory models look for other people that are investing, for example, retail traders or other hedge funds, they look for these positions and then they can use their leverage a lot of times to fudge the price up or down to basically force you into, like in this example, right, a short squeeze. So they're forcing you into that, right? If you think the people on Reddit should do it, then you'd also have to admit that all the hedge funds should be able to do it too, right? But we don't want markets that are manipulated by firms that are trying to go out and force prices up and down to make a profit, right? That's not fair to anybody. It doesn't matter if you're the hedge fund doing it or you're another hedge fund that's being screwed by another hedge fund, or if your retail trader's doing it, right? Manipulating prices is not good. Markets need to be efficient. There needs to be liquidity involved in these marketplaces. And because of that, right, because you have the liquidity here, because you have all these people buying and selling and stuff, 
right? It should freely flow, but you should not be able to organize whether it's a hedge fund internally or a group of hedge funds or a group of banks or a group of individuals. You should not be able to go out and you legally cannot go out and manipulate prices because you don't like a decision. So that's kind of what's happening now. Again, there are other tidbits. So if you have other information or pieces, go ahead and put them in the comments. I'm sure it's gonna blow up and have a ton of comments on here. Um, again, Robinhood's decision to prevent trading, I mean, I'm against it in one way because it's like people should be able to freely trade. So I'm all for that. But at the same time, I think Robinhood's trying to do something right. And they're trying to prevent people from getting stuck in a position where if that price goes up and you're buying it, you know, $300 towards the top and then it crashes and you lose everything. Um, again, Robinhood also has to make sure that you can, you know, you're fine with losing that. And again, I think perhaps they should just let you trade it and let these retail, you know, traders take a bath if it happens. They might squeeze them out. But again, then you also have the legality issue of is Robinhood legally responsible for preventing the manipulation? I would say no. They should probably just let people trade as is. But that being said, right, if any of those individuals in that group get charged for manipulation, which again would be prison time, um, yeah, that's gonna that that's possibly possibly could happen, right? SEC could come down and crack it down on that. Um, you can Google too, right? I'm sure there's been other cases of manipulation, market manipulation, people getting caught, people going to prison. So anyways, those are my two cents. Again, I'm not an expert on the GameStop issue here. I'm just trying to show you guys kind of what's going on from a very high level perspective for the average Joe. Uh, short selling again makes markets more efficient, helps adjust prices. Again, you don't want them to go crazily up or down. Again, like what's happening, again, the Redditors are actually causing an issue, just as a lot of people are claiming the short selling is causing an issue. Uh, but again, just taking a position in the short sell, if they're not trying to manipulate it, right, they're just taking a position, not really a big deal. People are wanting to buy it, not a big, de not a big deal, not a position here. But if you organize together and you have an intention to actually manipulate markets, you're probably gonna be in a bad spot. So anyways, thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.